I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I tell you what. It's a good time to do a netcast, and I'll tell you why. Because the long and continuing story of the Time Warner debacle is finally over. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> yes. Well, here's what I have to say about that. It took them three weeks, three, three weeks, but they finally got it right. And I will give them credit for one thing that's very good. And that is that once they discovered there was an issue, they did jump on getting it fixed. Meaning that I had lots of people calling me going, Is it okay now? Is it okay now? Is it okay now? Yes, it is. Now, uh, they actually had to cajole me a little bit into getting everything that I needed before it was all over with because I was getting so frustrated I said look I've got a screen I have pictures on my TiVo this is good to go away <laughs> but they said dude we still haven't got it right yet because we still need to give you your full range of HD channels I hit the microphone thing there it probably went bonk <laughs> anyway sorry um so you remember, I know I'm digressing just a bit here, but bear with me. So, uh, you know I needed the multi-card for the TiVo, and I also said I needed a cable channel tuner box. Well, once I got the multi-card in there, and they still hadn't brought the cable channel tuner box thing, uh, I was getting HD channels, and I said, well, this is good, leave it alone. And I canceled the second appointment for the box, but they called me back. This I'll give them much credit for. They call me back and says, dude, you're not getting all the channels you're supposed to get. You really need to get the box. So I said, okay. So sure enough, I checked a few channels, and I wasn't getting all the channels. It's just those were channels I didn't watch very much, so I did, hadn't noticed. But I would have noticed, because I would have missed, like, the science channel. I watched that, you know, because I like sciencey things. So... So I'll give them credit for pushing through and getting it all done. Yes. So, no rant for Time Warner this week. A thumbs up. Still a little concerned about the time it took, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm good now. <laughs> Leave it alone. All right, let's go to the blog. Well, before I do that, I should mention, my goodness, I've forgotten all the things I'm supposed to do. I should mention that we're proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. But you knew that. Still, I need to mention it because otherwise the new listeners and viewers would not know. There you go. So go check out techpodcast.com blueberry.com b l u b r r y and all the other great properties of raw voice media yes okay let's go to the blog shall we the blog of course being d r b i l l dot c c for computer curmudgeon of course we know that dot c c stands for computer curmudgeon because what else would it stand for right so i've said before certainly not some island not in the middle of the pacific somewhere Yes. <laughs> okay, the blog says Firefox 5 is out. Now, what's up with this? I mean, only three months ago we had Firefox 4. Now we've got Firefox 5. You think they're getting number happy? You know, are they getting, they want to catch up with Microsoft's numbering? <laughs> what's up? Anyway, apparently there, there are some new features in Firefox 5, but a whole new number notch up I mean this would have been more like a 4.1 you know what I'm saying but here's the thing you're waiting for my opinion I'm sure 
I'm sure. On Firefox 5, well, here's my opinion on Firefox 5. It's still clunky and slow. It's less clunky and slow than it was, but it's still clunky and slow, and Google Chrome is faster. So, I'm sticking with Chrome. Okay? Plus, being an old Harley motorcycle guy, what else you going to go with but Chrome? Ha, <laughs> ha. Yes. Okay, that wasn't such a great joke, but just deal with it. Okay. Computer curmudgeon coming out there, you know what I'm saying? All right, next item, Star Wars MMO shutting down in December. Massively multiplayer online game. Yes. Massively multiplayer online game. Wouldn't that be MMOG? I guess they shorten it to MMO in the headline because who really cares? Anyway, I mentioned in the article that the Game Master will be bummed. Actually, I'm not sure he cares very much, even though I said that as well in the article. Uh, and perhaps other folks don't care as much either, but Star Wars Galaxies will be shutting down December of this year. Now, I like Star Wars, and I like computery things, so you'd have thought that I'd have played this game, but I didn't. Eh. Not much of a gamer, what can I say? But, but, many people did, and I'm sure they'll miss it, and it's a shame. It was the, uh, let's see, I believe it was... The announcement comes two days before the MMO celebrates its eighth birthday. Eight years of Star Wars gaming online. Hmm. Hmm. If it's eight years old, I wonder how good it is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know. I've never been there. So, there you go. BioWare will be starting its new game, which is uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. And, you know, uh, I have seen Ben, the Game Master, my son, play Mass Effect, and i got to give it a thumbs up. It's, it's very good. So, I will see how that will work. Perhaps he will play that, and we'll get a report from him about that. How's that? Next item, Mac security updates. Yes, I said Mac security updates. Do you think Macs have malware? Dude, of course they do. And getting more all the time. Apple release Mac OS X 10. 10.6.8 yesterday in preparation for its Lion release. This is as the time frame this was written. There are several things to like about the new update, including changes to Final Cut Pro X or 10. As well, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. As well as enhancements to the Mac App Store ahead of the release of Lion. Apparently, this article is just slightly out of date. Sorry about that. Because Final Cut Pro X is out, and the next item is it seems to stinketh. <laughs> Many people who like Final Cut Pro. Keep in mind, they like Final Cut Pro, have tried the new release, and says that it's terrible. They're bummed. How bummed are they, Dr. Bill? Well, I'll tell you. Among the 985 reviews currently at Mackle, Mackles, <laughs> that's bad even for me. <laughs> Apple's Mac App Store, you try saying that fast. Mackles. I like it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. Okay. Get up. Okay, get up. Control. Control. Thank you. Apple's Mac App Store has 449 one-star ratings. Ooh. One star. Now that's out of the 985, there are 449 that are one star. That's pretty bad. So on the blog, I have a video of Conan O'Brien's editing team as a video and what they think about it. Needless to say, 
they are not happy. You should see the video. I have it posted on the blog. You can see it there, or you can go to YouTube. Either way, <laughs> Mackle. I don't know why. That just really got me. I like that. So. Oh! Yes, it's time for another Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week. This week is very, very special. Very special. It is Media Lister. Why is it special? Because it's our own open source project. Now, you may know if you've been following Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, the video show for a long period of time, that we here at drbillbailey.net have an open source project called Durcaster. The idea behind Durcaster is, which by the way is at durcaster.org, you can check that out, but uh, the Durcaster project, the whole idea there is that you can take a, an MP3 file or an MP4 file or an M4V file or various types of media files, drop them into a directory, and the meta tag data embedded in the file, the ID3 meta tag data, will then create an RSS feed for you without you having to do anything special. You know, like writing a bunch of XML code, typing it all in by hand, like it used, you used to have to do in the day, you know what I'm saying? So, Durcaster is a very useful tool to publish via RSS feeds. Well, I came up with an idea uh, based on my drbill.tv site, which by the way, you can go check that out, drbill.tv. And uh, I, I came up with this idea of if you could take videos, .flv flash video files, drop them into a directory. Now there's no ID3 meta tag data in an FLV file. So you still have to use an XML metadata descriptor file, but you can organize that and make it very simple to add those in. So I talked to our programmer extraordinaire, PHP guru, Henry Ratliff from Texas. See, that's the great thing about open source. People are just spread out all across the world and yet they help one another. And Henry is thumbs up, a true awesome dude who has helped me many times in the past with Durcaster. And so I pitched the idea to Henry. I said, hey, Henry, what do you think of this idea? for this thing called Media Lister. Actually, he named it Media Lister. I just came up with the general idea of how it was going to work. And uh, so, you can go check out medialister.org and uh, see a whole lot about it. But, since it is the Geek Star for the Week, and since it is so awesomely cool, and now the DrBill.tv site is based on that software, I'm going to give you a special introduction to it. Right All right, now. I want to introduce you to Media Lister. This, as you may can tell, looking at it, is the drbill.tv site. And here's my cursor. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, what I want to show you is not the site per se, but the episodes. See this up here where it says episodes? If you click that, you will get an episode guide. Isn't it lovely? I'm going to scroll right here so it, you can see clearly the episode guide. Notice the instruction. Use the scroll bar on the right of the screen below. That would be this little item right here. Then find and click on the netcast number field to view the netcast. So if we we're to scroll down, and let's just find something. Oh, look, Dr. Bill's TiVo. How to build a Pringles Cantenna for digital TV. See how you can read the information about the netcast? Then when you highlight the netcast number and click it, it takes you to Netcast 182 and check it out. There's even a picture of the doctor with a play button over his nose. That's odd. It looks rather strange. But at any rate, drbill.tv Netcast 182. If I click play, then it starts playing, as one might expect. But at any rate, uh, this demonstrates how Media Lister works. Now I know you say, well that's pretty simple Dr. Bill. Yes, but what I was having to do before Media Lister was program this page by hand every time I did a netcast. That took a lot of time and was not a lot of fun. I'm gonna stop myself right there. <laughs> Just hit pause.
At any rate, notice how it pulls this information, the Pringles Cantina edition of Dr. Bill TV 182, as a subtitle of that information. And if I scroll down a little further here, you will see that the uh, tag info from the file, now granted this is a, not the metadata in an FLV file because there is no tag metadata in an FLV file, but what this is coming from is a file called medialister.xml and that is a very simple XML file and uh, actually I think I can show you that file. Let me try that. I haven't tried this so if it doesn't work then you can just shoot me. Up. Ah! didn't work. Let's try it again. Media Lister. Maybe I misspelled it. Media Lister dot XML. Eh, it's not going to not going to show it. So what are you going to do? By the way, that's my official 404 error page for drbillbailey.net. All of my websites take you there. If you have an error, error, error. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can go back to the episodes and see more episodes. Scroll down all the way to the very bottom and you will find netcast number one, our very first video netcast. You want to see something really crazy looking? Check this out. It's January 2007. Isn't that a strange looking dude? <laughs> yes, well, I just had the most epically bad haircut of all time and I decided, hey, let's do our first netcast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> you know how I am in haircuts, you know? I mean, I'm just not much of a haircut person. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I don't know what it is about haircuts. I just don't like getting haircuts. This is the website, medialister.org. Uh, it is similar to our other website, dercaster.org. Dot org because orgs are non-profit. Know what I mean? So we're not profiting off this. This is an open source project. So that makes sense. Anyway, Durcaster uh, is, as I mentioned in the netcast earlier, is an instant RSS doohickey for websites. Media Lister gives you the episode guide. Now, if you click on the episode guide uh, here on the site, you're going to get a real generic looking episode guide with some generic netcast including some lorem ipsum descriptions you know lorem ipsum is what web folk like myself use to just kind of fill up space that's what it's for so if we pick a netcast and it will come up and ta -da! there's the netcast video 003 and if I play it it's rather boring there's not any audio even though I would have audio turned off anyway uh, <laughs> I've got that there, but see, there's the notes, and we can return to the episode guide, and it'll take us back to the generic screen there. Now, you'll notice it doesn't have all of the um, style sheet information and all of that. You can obviously do that by customizing two files, the index.html, which is this file right here, even though I can't pronounce it index.html and the viewer.html which is the other file here by customizing those two HTML files with uh, cascading style sheet information or uh, going right into the file and doing it with straight HTML you can actually incorporate this tool right into your website and use media lister now as you can see what it does is pass a parameter uh, to the viewer.html from the previous index.html with the number of the um, particular netcast you're wanting to use. Now I'm going to bring up, I hadn't planned to do this, so bear with me a moment while I bring it over into the screen. Um, hmm. Do -do 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 -do. There we go, that's pretty close. All right, let me go to the um, actual site, and I'll show you something rather interesting. Do, 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 Media Lister. This is the website that Media Lister is running on. And here is the Media Lister 
information. When you get the uh, .zip file from MediaLister, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a, a directory full of files. You copy this up to your website using FTP as I'm doing here with FileZilla and you will have the FLV files. These are just simple small test FLV files. You can replace those with yours. And then you have a directory here for images. You notice the images are uh, portable network graphics PNG images that match the name of the FLV files. That's all you really have to do. Then, oh, there's the reason it didn't come up earlier. It's media list. Dot XML, not media lister. Dot XML. Silly me. Anyway, let me go ahead and edit that file. And once again, I hadn't planned to do this, so I hadn't. I have not set this to the right length and size for the screen. I'll do that now. But you'll notice that basically what you have is content with a media tag, a file tag, and then the information. Here's the ID for video number one, the file name for video number one title, subtitle, date, and this is the date that you recorded it, for instance, comment, which in this case, let me uh, do a word wrap. By the way, this is PSPAD, which is a very nice programmer's editor that I like to use. Just kind of throwing that out there. Uh, but anyway, you can see, now that I've done word wrap, that you've got a file description here that you can put between the comments. Close that file. Now that's pretty simple, right? So the only thing per video that you would have to do is fill out this information in the medialist.xml file. And uh, there you go. So you just list them, all the different ones. You save it. And I'll get out of there. And get out of there. Let's, I meant to get out of there. That's what I meant to do. Do what I think, not what I'm doing. <laughs> it's always like that, huh? Anyway, and so here's the information, the version, the subtitle, and the information down here. So that comes from that file. So as you can see, what happens when you click here, it generates that quickly, boom, generates actual HTML code. If you were to go here and view the page source, you would see that it's generating all this lovely HTML code for you without you having to code it by hand. How cool is that? So that's Media Lister. Go forth and enjoy the Media Lister goodness. So once again, here's the website. Check it out. Click here to download it. Let me scroll down just a tad here. You can click here to download it. And there you go. That's how you use it. You see the cute little logo here? Media Lister. See with a, a list. Get it? Yes. I just like things like that. I did it with Durcaster too. See the Dur directory logo caster. Okay, yeah, I know. So maybe it's a little lame, but it's fun. I like doing these things. So there you go. That's the website. That's the Geek Software of the Week for this week. And even though it is our Geek Software of the Week, I still think it's cool. So how awesome is that? Now, here's where I think it's going to be really useful for you. If you are working with a church, let's say, and your pastor wants to do videos online, this is a great way to organize them and put the information out there where people can scroll through the information, pick out a video and watch it. They're right online, streamed. Uh, which, by the way, this is a progressive stream, okay? Uh, but you, you can actually incorporate PHP streaming, which is a whole other little module that's on the dirtcaster.org site so you can check that out but anyway digressing again the point is uh, you may have family videos you may have I don't know a club that you're in or you may have interest that you want to share uh, through your website and you can do it with media lister so cool stuff so there you go a demo of media lister and all the news that's fit to talk about and as Todd Cochran says, we did it almost live, or as live as it can be. I like the way he says that. As live as it can be. So there you go. But speaking of as live as it can be, as technology continues to advance, we have further advancements. That was redundant. But anyway, would you be interested 
this is this is you I'm talking to you would you be interested in the dr. Bill show or some derivative thereof broadcasting live on Ustream would you that way you could watch the doctor live in the silliness such as you see it now except it would be live and you could chat about it right there online and say this guy's crazy <laughs> but you knew that anyway would you be interested write me at dr. bill dot the uh, let me spell it out instead of trying to say it and spell it at the same time because that doesn't work D R B I L L at D R B I L L dot C C for computer curmudgeon. Dr. Bill at Dr. Bill dot C C. You can't say that and spell it at the same time. I tried it, didn't work. There you go. More information you needed to know. In the meantime, remember that the doctor is out of here.